I, I realize now that I've been kind of thinking about Wolfram Alpha since I was probably about, uh, I think, 12 years old. In fact, I recently uh, found, I think it's even on the web, a thing that I uh, did when I was 12 years old that uh, was a kind of a 100 and something page book that I assembled that was sort of a, a directory of facts about physics. And actually, it was kind of kind of useful. I could uh, check Wolfram Alpha a bit from that book, and I could check that book a bit from, from Wolfram Alpha. Um, but uh, I've been sort of interested in this problem of kind of systematizing knowledge for, for a long time. And I did not think, uh, I didn't know when a thing like Wolfram Alpha uh, would be possible. Um, in fact, I wasn't sure it would happen in my lifetime. Um, it's uh, and sort of every decade or so, I kind of uh, have thought, is it possible now to build something like Wolfram Alpha? Um, and in the past, I'd always uh, come to the conclusion that no, it's completely hopeless. And finally, a few years ago, I was thinking about it again, and I realized, actually, now I think we're finally to the point where it should be possible to build a Wolfram Alpha. Now, partly that's because of sort of the, the, uh, the general progress of technology. Computers are fast enough. There's the web to deliver things and so on. Partly also it's because of two particular projects that I've spent uh, uh, the probably a quarter of a century now working on. Mathematica, sort of building the, the symbolic language that's needed to represent knowledge in a, in a uniform, powerful way. And NKS, which sort of gave me the kind of uh, the paradigm and gave me sort of the, the confidence in thinking about this to realize that it might be possible to sort of assemble uh, sort of all the computable knowledge in the world in a way that uh, uh, could be sort of uh, done with, with frameworks that are simple enough that it was practical. I also had the, the very fortunate situation that um, I built a, a company that um, was capable of taking the kind of uh, long-term view of, of research and development that's possible to do a project that, frankly, seemed as crazy as Wolfram Alpha seemed when it started. Um, it's also something where I've been able to build up a very eclectic team of people um, who uh, are really kind of the ideal team uh, to try and make an assault on Wolfram Alpha. Um, they're people who uh, have uh, a whole variety of different backgrounds and, and sort of deep expertise in lots of different areas. And it's, um, it's also, in a sense, the, uh, our company is, is both large enough to uh, support um, the kind of effort that Wolfram Alpha inevitably is, yet small enough that there's kind of the, the sorts of sort of cross-pollination that are needed to be able to sort of have, uh, uh, have a project like this be able to come together, because this is not a project that uh, can be done in, in well-defined teams um, that uh, uh, you could do in a sort of a mature area where we say we've got to have an A and a B and a C and a D. Um, we don't know what all of those different pieces are going to be, so we have to kind of get into it and, and expect that there's sort of uh, lots of communication going on uh, to sort of solve all the problems that, that we need to solve as the project goes forward.